Good morning and happy Easter from us at St. John's. We're glad that you joined us today for our live stream service. We'll be following uh, a printed order of service for the first part of it. We'll also be seeing three hymns today, number 152, 157, and 752 at the conclusion of the service. Our service begins today with the first four verses of hymn number 152, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. And we join in the responsive reading. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. And we pray. Dear Lord, we come before you to confess our sins. Things we have done, things we have not done, things we have said, things we should have said, we also confess our thoughts that are impure or selfish. We confess all our sins in confidence of your death and resurrection. We now pause for personal confession. As a called servant of Christ, I assure you that as you have asked, your sins are forgiven. Christ has paid the penalty. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. The choir now continues with verse 5 of, I know that my Redeemer lives. 
This verse reminds us that Jesus lives to silence our fears, to wipe away our tears, and to calm our troubled hearts by his work on the cross and his glorious resurrection. The choir will now sing verse 5. Our service continues with the scripture lessons for this special celebration of Easter. Our first reading this morning from Colossians chapter 3. Here the Apostle Paul talks of the power of the resurrection that because he lives, so will his people and will even appear someday with him in glory. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Our service continues with verses 6 through 8 of, number, of hymn number 152. I know that my Redeemer lives. Our gospel reading this morning comes from Matthew chapter 28. The women come to the tomb, meet an angel who has amazing news. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy 
and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Our service continues now with our next hymn, number 157, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This morning we will consider this lesson from Matthew chapter 28. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. This is the word of God. Dear friends in Christ, two days ago, a pastor friend of mine wrote me a note. 
He said that during the course of the day, someone had wished him a good day, and then later said, no, good Friday. And it startled my friend a bit, because he had actually forgotten that it was Good Friday. When I read that the other night, I realized, you know, I felt the same way. It was Friday, but it didn't really feel like Good Friday. And the same thing for Thursday. You know, Monday, Thursday, what do we do? We gather here together, we hear Jesus with those words, take and eat, and then what do we do? We, we follow what he says, and we come and celebrate Holy Communion together. But Thursday didn't really feel much like Thursday. My fear this morning is, Sunday, that this is not going to seem like Easter Sunday. You know what we do on Easter Sunday. We gather together, we sing and worship God, we talk together, we head over to the all-purpose room, the teens serve us breakfast, yum. But we're not going to be able to do that today. So what I did was I decided to bring back something that helped me to remember the special day that was Easter when I was growing up. So this morning, what I remember what my sister and I used to do. My parents would hide our Easter baskets, and then before we went to church, we'd scurry around the house and find it. So this morning, I actually brought an Easter basket. Just a minute. I think someone hid my Easter basket. Just a minute. Oh, there it is. Thank you. (laughs) So I have some things today in my Easter basket that might help us to remember that it is Easter. For example, I brought one of these hard-boiled eggs. We've done that many times. Maybe you have too. You know where you color them in a special way. And the Easter egg, the shell is hard, but then when you break it, there's something inside sort of reminds us of Jesus breaking out of the tomb. I also brought one of these. You know, we weren't able to have our Easter egg hunt last week, and this would have been one of the eggs sitting out there in the yard. But I brought it today. Wait a second. Oh. There's actually one of these uh, chocolate rabbits in it. We have a whole bunch of those over at school. Best if eaten by this afternoon, okay? I know what I'm doing today. And then I brought something else as well. Peeps. You know, you can't have Easter without peeps. So you know what I'm going to be doing this afternoon, right? I'm going to be hanging with my peeps. <laughs> Even though I brought an Easter basket, though, I still wonder if it's not going to seem like Easter. It just isn't going to be the same. Or is it? You know, it's made me thought, think this past week, what really makes Easter, Easter? And that's to be able to celebrate and know that Jesus is alive and well. Well, this morning we're going to meet some women who discover that, and we can discover it ourselves. You know this lesson Early on the first day of the week, these women hurry to the tomb because we know what has already happened. On Friday, Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the world. Then as the night was ebbing away, they quickly buried his body because the Sabbath was approaching. Then they waited, but then early Sunday morning, they hastened to the tomb to prepare his body for burial. When they got there, what a scene. And what a bunch of obstacles, too. They just wanted to find Jesus. But think of the things that stood in their way. The the first thing was that stone. After Jesus was buried, it says they put a stone in front of that tomb. A, A very large stone. In fact, it suggested that the only way you could get the stone there was not even to push it. You had to use a series of levers to get it into place. Someone has estimated that that stone weighed between three and 4,000 pounds. How were they going to move that? And it wasn't just the stone, but it was also the soldiers. Remember how the chief priests and teachers of the law said that they should put a guard there? 
A Roman guard unit usually consisted of four soldiers. They were stationed there at the tomb. They were disciplined fighting men who were held to the highest standards. If they failed to perform and do their duty, it resulted in death, usually in torture and humiliation. And then one more thing, too. The seal. They sealed up that tomb. Maybe I read uh, some soft clay or some wax that they'd seal the tomb, and then they took the, the Roman seal and impressed it there. And that Roman seal meant stay away. If you break the Roman seal, it meant automatic execution by crucifixion upside down. They came just to find Jesus, and all they found were a bunch of obstacles. You know, this morning is Easter, and we come to find Jesus also. But what are you finding today? It just seems that for a lot of people, that virus has everyone on edge. We're all sheltering at home. Many of us were surrounded by the people whom we love. But are you finding that some of those people on whom you love are starting to get on your nerves a little bit? Are you finding that sometimes maybe you're lashing out in anger or you're snapping at them? We're not living in love that's a sin. And maybe not just that, but are you finding it becoming more and more easy to complain? Complain about what's going on, to complain about decisions that are being made? You know, complaining is really complaining about the circumstances in which God has placed us. Complaining is a sin, isn't it? That virus is is wearing everyone down. Or or maybe you're just finding that life is being filled more and more with distractions and preoccupations. Are you becoming more and more preoccupied with the next news story, trying to find out what the next thing is that's closed, and just becoming distracted, distracted with all the worries and the fears and the anxieties and uncertainties of what's going to happen. In fact, it it seems so much that that we can become so distracted and preoccupied that days just go by and you don't even know what they were, that today we can become so distracted and so preoccupied that Easter might not even seem like Easter, that it's been hijacked by this virus. The devil must just be laughing. That's why it's so important for us today to listen to these words and remember what happened. It said there was a violent earthquake, that an angel of the Lord came down and rolled the stone away. The soldiers shook and become like dead men. Think about it. A stone, a soldier, a seal. God must have been laughing. Could those things stop him from revealing what he had done? Could a little 4,000-pound stone? He must have said, I made bigger than that. Could a soldier that he created stop him from revealing his power or a little wax seal? And so what did God do? He had that angel come down who pushed the stone away and then sat on top of it. And it was those women then who came who learned something that day. You can't stop Easter. Jesus is alive and well. They heard that angel say, He's not here. He's risen. Then, moments later, they saw Jesus. They fell down on his feet. They clasped his feet and worshipped him. And they realized, Jesus is alive and well. And through those experiences and the ones that would come, they realized something else, too. That through faith, they were alive and well. That when Jesus had said, it is finished, that their sins had been taken away. That when they heard the words of the angel, when they saw Jesus, 
that death has been conquered and that eternal life is coming. It wasn't just that Jesus was alive and well. Now they were too. And dear friends, that's our thought today as well. Think about it. Jesus is alive and well, and by faith, so are you. Your sins are taken away. By the grace of God, through the work of Jesus, all our sins are forgiven. It gives us great confidence to come before God, to confess our sins, and to receive the forgiveness that he won for us, and then to live in that joy. It's not just that Jesus is alive and well, you are too. Because Jesus lives, he promises that you will too. That this earthly life, though it's short and filled with trouble, that one day Jesus will raise you from the grave and will live with you forever. Not only is Jesus alive and well, but dear friend, so are you. And may that joy today permeate your heart and mind to remember the great promise, you can't stop Easter. Think about it. From God's point of view, what was he saying? No stone, no soldier, no seal, no sin, no Satan, and certainly no virus can stop God from revealing the amazing things that he can do with the power of his word. He's not here. He's risen. Jesus is alive and well. And by faith, so are we. And that's the essence of Easter. Even if you can't get your Easter basket today, even if you can't gather with family and friends or hang with your peeps, we're reminded that Jesus is alive and well and through his work, through faith in him, so are we. May that thought penetrate your heart and mind. Grab hold of that today and trust what Jesus has done for you. It's a message to believe in our hearts. It's a message to proclaim. And it's a message that allows us to deal with what's going on around us with confidence and faith. And today I'd just like to close with this. Uh, Every so often, we receive newsletters from Luther High School, and I received one just about a week ago. And it's a little newsletter, usually starts out with a devotional article written by a pastor or maybe one of the teachers. And this one especially caught my eye because it wasn't written by either. It was written actually by a student, actually written by a a student from our school, St. John's, uh, many years ago. And this is what it says. It's based on Psalm 46. And the author says this. The coronavirus is causing people to be filled with fear and uncertainty because we don't know how much damage this can really do. We don't know how to stop this invisible enemy. I find joy in knowing that even though our nation is in uproar, the earth seems to be falling apart as this virus takes its toll on all of us, I know that God is my fortress and he has power over everything. I know that no matter what this virus may do to my future, that I can be still because I know that God is my God and he does everything for my good and knows what's best for me. Those are some thoughtful and touching words. And they remind us that even all these things around us that are changing and all the uncertainties, it reminds us God doesn't change. Forgiveness doesn't change. Resurrection doesn't change. God has completed those things and they are all done. And they're just waiting for us to be grabbed hold of and believed that God, by the Holy Spirit, would lead us to that same kind of confidence and conviction. Jesus is alive and well, and by faith, dear friend, 
so are you. He's not here. He's risen. And that makes Easter, Easter. Amen. And we join in prayer. Thanks be to you, O Lord, for giving us the victory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, you have not forsaken us or left us to our own destruction, but kept your ancient promise to send a Savior. We praise you for his perfect life, his innocent death, his glorious resurrection. Because of your faithfulness to your promises, today is the day of victory. Savior Jesus, we praise you for carrying out God's plan of salvation. Your resurrection is undeniable evidence that you have triumphed over sin, death, hell, and the devil. Because of your resurrection, today is a day of victory. Holy Spirit, we praise you that through the gospel you have led us to know and believe that Jesus is our risen Savior. Today we say confidently, as the angel did, he is not here, he has risen. Preserve us in faith. Raise us to newness of life. Continue to lavish on us all the blessings, blessings of this day of victory. Triune God, kindle in our hearts a love for all people. Equip us with both the will and the words to tell others that Jesus has indeed risen from the grave and use us to share the message of the empty tomb so that others too may rejoice in Jesus' victory. These and all our prayers we bring in our Savior's name who has also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And receive with believing hearts the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Before our service clo closes with a final hymn, which is number 752, I'll just make a, a couple of announcements. First of all, I'd like to thank our choir and those people who've been helping us with music through these last few weeks. It's been very important and special that we've been able to put these live stream services together. We thank you for also watching them and helping others perhaps to watch them as well. On a news note, next week our congregation was scheduled to have our uh, quarterly voters meeting. We're hoping to be able to still do that, but do it virtually online. An email will be sent out uh, later this week to allow people to come in and be part of that discussion. If for some reason we don't have your email or it changed, please let us know so we can invite you to that. That's scheduled for next Sunday on the 19th at 11.45 a.m. Now our service concludes with our final hymn, a reminder that Jesus has in fact been risen from the dead. May the Lord continue to bless you and your family as we rejoice in our risen Savior. <laughs>